July 27th. I have been knitting away on my Desert Vista Dye Work Sock and I've made it to the heel flap. So if you haven't heard me say this before, I modify my heel flap to be extra long. Uh, usually a pattern for my size would recommend 32 rows. I actually do 42 rows. I think it ends up being two and a half inches and that means I pick up more gusset stitches and it accommodates for a high end step. So if you don't love heel flap and gusset or it just hasn't fit you as good as you want and you have a high end step, that is something I can recommend is uh, giving that a try. I found it really, really helps. So I'm just going to continue to work on that. Eventually I will get a workout in on the Peloton. I did not do CrossFit today just because I was so exhausted. And tomorrow, unfortunately on my day off, I have work obligations that are actually cutting into uh, some appointments I had scheduled, uh, really just a pain in the rear. So I am going to do my best to make it to CrossFit tomorrow. Hopefully everything will cooperate. I hope you're having a wonderful July 27th and I will check in with you later. Hopefully, I don't think I'll have a finished sock at any point today, but I'll at least have the gusset stitches picked up, I think, by the end of the day. It's 1.41 in the morning and I have picked up the gusset and I have started the decreases, but I'm not very far yet. This for me is always what feels like the slowest part of the sock. I don't know why. It, I don't dislike it necessarily. It's just actually right now I've already messed up. Either I skipped a decrease or I decreased two um, rounds in a row because I generally do every other one. So I'm just off. So it's no big deal. I'm just going to do an extra plain round, get back on track. My stitch count is still even. So I don't know where I went wrong. It's fine. It will work out, but I don't love this part. I'm going to do some plying now, so I'm very excited about that. I was hoping I could get my skeins like 50 grams, but I don't think that's going to happen. It ultimately doesn't really matter. It's just a few extra ends and I can spit, spit splice this together, so it'll be fine. Uh, I just really have no idea. Obviously, there's still room. I don't know. We'll see. I have been plying, plying, plying. And look at that. I finished the spindle worth, I guess, and I weighed this. It's close to 100 grams, including the spindle, and I did the math on what my spindle and leader weigh, and this is something like 53.9 grams, which is so exciting. I wanted 50 grams, so it's just perfect. Um, the reason I stopped it was because my very first plying ball ran out, so I'm a nickel richer, I guess. I got my nickel back. Um, and here are the other two that did not run out yet. It's so hard to show them. Of course, it's, you know, three in the morning or something. So I'm guessing that this is probably plying ball number five. And this is plying ball number ten, but it's only a guess because ten was the biggest. Five I used the least, and I'm assuming I ran out of one first because I used one the most. It makes sense in my head. At this point, it doesn't really matter. So um, the next one, next spindle worth, I will start with these two and pick one more from my plying balls and use that till the next one runs out and just keep adding in like that. 
keeping the three ply going as long as I can. And then any little bit that's left over, I will try to do a chain ply. I can't quite picture the process of a chain ply on a spindle, but I'm sure there's a way. And I'm sure there's probably a YouTube video that will show me how to do it. So that being said, I'm gonna let this rest. I will put it on the nitty knotty probably tomorrow and calculate my pre-washing yardage. But for now, I'm gonna go ride my Peloton because I have to do things I don't wanna do. I forgot to show you my little hearts. I guess this one isn't quite full, but it's pretty full. Uh, definitely winding the next one, I'm going to save myself more room. You can see it's actually kind of like started to collapse and fall apart a little bit there. Because even though I probably stopped here, um, it just keeps like mushing itself down. So I will wrap it a little bit differently next time. Clearly I could have fit more on there, but you know, if I wrap it differently and stop sooner, it might end up being about the same amount. All I really wanted was 50 grams, so it's perfect in my book. <laughs> I am ready to work out, and I thought before I did that that I would share a little shopping tip with you all. I am quite the bargain shopper. I don't like spending too much on things. Not that I'm not willing to pay for quality, but when the extra cost is just for a brand name, it does not make sense to me. And you might be asking yourself, Shauna, I see that you're wearing Peloton gear. That shit is expensive. Excuse me, I cussed, but you know, it is expensive. So this is new, I just got this. And uh, the pants I'm wearing, are also Peloton new and uh, the pants well, let me tell you the pants retail for $78 oh, it's not even focusing there we go $78 US and uh, this is not a brag I did not pay $78 for these pants I paid $15 for these pants and the tank top retails for 56 US dollars I did not pay $56, I paid 10. So my whole uh, workout outfit was, math, $27, which isn't too bad, because I don't wanna work out. I don't need to look cute when I'm working out. I could care less. <laughs> I just need it to cover my body and absorb sweat and do all the things. But um, my shopping tip for you is Sierra Trading Post. Have you ever heard of it? Uh, I guess they get like last year's stuff or um, maybe things that uh, don't make the final inspection or something. I've bought a lot of things from there and I've never had any issues. So if you are in the market for athletic gear and you want to wear a Peloton name on your shirt, I don't really care, but it honestly was affordable, so why not? Um, go check them out. Uh, I'm not sponsored. Uh, they don't know who I am. Although if they want to send me some workout gear, I'm I'm all for it. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm getting delirious and avoiding working out. So I'm going to do that now. You guys, I kicked my own butt. Do you see that? And I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not like someone who sweats very easily. Um, but proof in my shirt. And I even sweated through my leggings. That's ridiculous. Um, I did a 30 minute advanced beginner ride with Ben Aldis. And uh, it's the first time since I started riding again that I stood up and pedaled while standing. I find that super challenging, so it gets my heart rate up really high. And then after that, I did a 20 minute beginner ride with Cody Rigsby. And it's a ride that I have taken twice before. So on the Peloton bike, it lets you see your rank compared to yourself. And not gonna lie, I was being competitive with myself. I pushed myself really hard, but I beat my score by like 10 points. So that makes me feel good. Anyway, I am done for the day, I think. I am super sweaty. I need to get some water, obviously a shower. And uh, I will talk to y'all tomorrow. I hope you get some exercise in if that makes you feel good. I'm, I'm finally getting to a point where, I don't know, maybe it's just today. I was actually feeling motivated to do this. So 
um, in the back of my head. I just keep thinking like, at work, I can't quit. I have to keep fighting. I have to keep pushing through. And it's very relatable to this when I just want to quit. So um, I'm building that mental muscle up again and physical muscle too. But <sighs> trying to get back at it. Thanks for listening to my Peloton talk. <laughs> it's not a TED talk. <laughs> All right. I'm serious now. Bye.